Hello and welcome along to Premier League today. Now we're going to start with some uh, really sad news in in the last hour or so that former Liverpool and Aston Villa manager Gerard Houllier has passed away at the age of 73. Houllier will of course be best remembered for a treble winning season at Anfield in 2000 and 2001 where Liverpool lifted the FA Cup, the UEFA Cup and the League Cup. Houllier also had a spell managing Aston Villa in the Premier League. Yeah, and Liverpool have tweeted their tribute in the last few minutes saying we are mourning the passing of our treble winning manager, Gerard Houllier. The thoughts of everyone at Liverpool Football Club are with Gerard's family and many friends. Rest in peace, Gerard Houllier, 1947 to 2020. Dion, Jub uh, Dion Dublin joins us in the studio now. Dion, I mean, he was adored, wasn't he, Gerard Houllier, by those, those Liverpool fans and had some, some great moments at Anfield. Yeah, and rightly so as well. I think he was sort of known as the gentleman, you know, just spoke very quietly and just got his point across in the right way in that beautiful French accent and got all his players on board, you know, doing things the right way and doing things the Liverpool way, you know, when he was at Liverpool. And yeah, really sad news, very sad news. For you personally, you obviously never played for him, but you came across him many times. What was he like? Yeah, I did. I played against his teams many, many times, found it very difficult to break down and score, which was very annoying. But um, he did try and sign me in 2004. Yeah, yeah I was at Aston Villa at the time. My contract had, I had one more year on the contract. He tried to sign me and he actually said to me, Dion, listen, Gary Mack, Gary McAllister's leaving. He's 37, 38. Would you come in? I was 34, 35. Mm. He said, would you come in and do that job for me? You're not going to play every game, but I need a leader in the dressing room. You could do my job for me in the dressing room. So he was that kind of person. He knew who to get on board at the right time to help him with his job. Very forward-thinking manager, ahead of his time, mm. he really was. Mm. And he was a key point of, of Liverpool's history, wasn't he? Because he came in after Roy Evans, obviously sort of just before Rafa Benitez uh, came in. He left in 2004. But when, winning those, those trophies, and it was a treble-winning season, of course, you know, the FA Cup and, and the League Cups that followed as, as well, and, and arguably put down a, a blueprint to, to the Liverpool that we, that we know today. Yes, yeah, he, he was... He was probably the start of the new breed uh, of Liverpool. He was probably the man that started this, the juggernaut that now is Liverpool. He probably started that. He was probably mm. at the forefront of making sure that all the right, all the right players Steven were Stephen Gerrard being one of them. There you go, you know, mm. round pegs in round holes and making it uncomplicated. Just, just do what Liverpool do, just pass, pass, pass and find a way. Yeah. And he allowed his players to express themselves as well. So he gave them responsibility, which I think was incredible. He also had a brilliant Premier League record as well, which mm. we can take a look at. Now Liverpool fans will enjoy looking at this, I'm sure. And of course, at Aston Villa as well. Yeah. We mustn't forget that. Yeah, and you know, uh, Ian Taylor's a very good friend of mine. He's an ambassador uh, at Aston Villa and he speaks incredibly highly of him. He's, he was around him a lot, spent a lot of time with him. You know, I would imagine having lovely meals and stuff like that, because <laughs> that's what Ian Taylor does. He said that Mr. Houdet was such a lovely bloke and always invited him into the dressing room if you want to come to the training ground. So very inclusive, you know, yeah. very inclusive. Yeah, and, and, and also, you know, when we talk about Steven Gerrard, 2005, of course, where the, the Champions League success came for, for Rafa and what we knew Steven Gerrard lifting that, that trophy against AC Milan. But, you know, he, he took Gerard from being a, a defender, a fullback, didn't he, into that yeah. force and El Capitana? Yeah, and, and um, seeing, seeing something in, in certain players that maybe other managers have. Look at Stevie's face there. Look. So and young. Yeah, so young, so naive, you know. But, but you know, <laughs> Mr. Julio, knowing that that was within him, that position was within him, look at those trophies there. You know, the pride, you can see the pride on his face, you know, that, that he's, he's achieved something mm. incredible for Liverpool. Right, let's uh, speak to uh, Michael Owen, of course, played under Gerard Houllier at Anfield. Michael, really sad news, and you're just taking this in now, so I appreciate you speaking to us live on Premier League today. Um, you know, your reaction, Michael, and tell us a bit about the, the man himself. Dion's already described him as a, as a gentleman of football. Yeah, it's, of, of course, really sad news. Uh, and Dion's right, an absolute gentleman. Um, you know, a lot of managers that I played for always ask you about, you know, uh, your family and house things at home and things like that. You know, but you know, some people that genuinely ask that question and and it, and it mattered. And, and you know, we, we'd we'd have my family after games at, at Liverpool, and he would come in. He would know all my. I had two brothers, two sisters. I had a wife. I had mum and dad. I had my children, and he knew every one of their names. Genuinely cared about people. He was a he was a gentleman as well as a, a brilliant manager, brilliant man. What are your fondest memories of him, Michael? Because I imagine you did have many working with him. 
that human touch, I mean, the, these uh, clips there, uh, me winning the Ballon d'Or, do you know what? I was proud winning that, that um, trophy back in the day, but I don't think I was as proud as he was. He was just... I mean, he was just so proud of his players, so proud of me on that occasion winning that trophy. It meant so much to him. Um, and I think that's what I'll remember him for. I, I mean, Liverpool has been Liverpool for years. It's always been a successful club, but it was in the doldrums for a few years. And, you know, around the turn of the century, it needed somebody to come in and actually, you know, bring us up to speed with, with where football is going, you know, the sports science. Um, how you live like athletes, play, you know, play in a certain way. And I think a lot changed a around the turn of the century. And, and he was the person that came in and actually reinvigorated the club at the time, won a lot of trophies and, uh, and almost set you know, solid foundations for, for what we're seeing now. Michael, what did, uh, he did try and sign me in 2000, uh, 2004, but, and I never got the chance to do it. I never got a chance to play for Liverpool. What did I miss out on? What did I miss out on on Mr. Julio? What would I have learned from him? Well, Dion, you've played obviously under some great managers. You've been signed by, by great clubs as well. And, and everybody that, that plays under certain managers will have their own tales to tell. And, um, but he was, uh, you would have liked him. Proper gentleman, as I, as I mentioned. Um, you know, Liverpool's a special club and it takes special people to, to, uh, to manage that club. Um, you see the, the current manager, how, how, uh, how special he is. Um, but Gerard Houllier, Houllier certainly was deserved of the title Liverpool Football Club Manager. His CV, as you see, is, uh, is an exemplary one. Exemplary one. He, he had big uh, contribution towards <clears throat> France and winning the 98 World Cup. And, and look at that. I mean, we weren't that close to, to winning things when he took over. And, and, uh, and pretty immediately, he, he, he turned us around into a, a winning machine. And, and nobody, I don't care whether you think the, the Champions League victories and Istanbul and all the rest for one-off for one off games, yes, but no Liverpool fan will ever forget that one season where we lifted five trophies. It was, it was just unbelievable and he was obviously at the, uh, at the epicentre of that. Yeah, uh, your old teammate Michael, Jamie Carragher, has just uh, tweeted, absolutely devastated by the news uh, about Gerard Houli. I was in touch with him only last month to arrange him coming to Liverpool. Loved the man to bits. He changed me as a person and as a player and got Liverpool back winning trophies. RIP boss. And I'm sure Michael Liverpool will, of course, pay their own tributes, won't they, against Tottenham in the midweek match, a huge match uh, in, in the Premier League. Just, just touching on that season, and I know you mentioned it there, the 2000-2001 season, the season we all remember with you scoring that goal in the FA Cup final at, at Cardiff. That, there was a real buzz around that club, which is very similar to, to what it is now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you mentioned someone like Jamie Carragher. He will be, if you said to, to Carragher, who was the most influential person on your professional career, then I'm sure Gerard Houllier would be right at the top of that list because I used to room with Cara. You know, we were together for, for many, many years. And the highs and lows that Cara had um, coming through the ranks, trying to get that first team spot, and Gerard Houllier really—he was one of the—he was one of the people in the squad that really needed Gerard Houllier more than most, I would say, uh, to professionalise his attitude, um, to almost channel his ability and his mental strength um, into to, to what it turned out to be. So I think someone like Jamie Carragher has got a lot to uh, be thankful uh, to Gerard Houllier for, as have we all. I mean, he. You know, I've got a, a trophy cabinet not far away from where I'm sat now, and it's uh, most of the medals in there are, are uh, down to Gerard Houllier. So I'm forever indebted to him. Um, you know, he was a special man, a special, you know, football man. He never played the game, but I always used to say that I think he could go into any organisation and be successful. He just had people skills. He, he knew how to, to uh, channel people's strengths. He knew how to create a, a, a place of work that you know, was a, a happy place. He was just a very, very good leader. And, you know, I'll certainly miss him. And I'll certainly... But as I say, I go back to him. I'm thinking of one thing. As much as he was all those qualities, he was a proper gentleman. You know, a real caring man. And that's probably the, the one thing that I'll miss. And finally, Michael, Will mentioned it there in, with Jamie Carragher's tweet. He was only in touch with Gerard a month ago about him coming over to Liverpool. How proud and pleased do you think he will be to see the success that the club are now having under Jurgen Klopp? And Aston Villa as well, another of his former clubs doing so well as well. He'd be delighted, I'm sure. 
He would be, yeah. He's a very uh, generous man. You know, he, he, he would love the success of, of others. He'd feel as if he's played his part in the history of the, the club. Um, he was very proud of, of what he achieved and the people that he achieved it with. You know, his, uh, his face, when, when, you, when he turns up in an event and you see him, the way his face lit up to, to see us, you know, I've been with the, the Stevie Gerrards and the Carras and, and people like that over the, over the years when we haven't seen him for a while and all of a sudden he enters the room and his face just changes. He's so, so proud of, of what we achieved and so, you know, caring towards all of us. You know, he's, uh, it was, you know, it's an old cliche, but he was a real father figure and he used to really care for, for all his players. So it's, uh, oh, it's, it's so sad, obviously, it's still sort of sinking in, but... Yeah, he'll, uh, he'd be very, very proud of, of the teams that he's managed and, and how well they're doing. Michael, lovely words and really appreciate you coming on sort of late notice and I appreciate you're, you're still taking in the news as well. So thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, that's Michael Owen, former Liverpool um, striker. Look, we, we have to remember Dion as well, but Gerard Houllier was first on the map in, I think, the 85-86 season when he won the first division with Paris Saint-Germain. And even after Liverpool, was still a winner. He went to Lyon and won two French league titles there, then came to your old club, uh, Aston Villa, not long after that, and got them out of a real mess, didn't he? I remember when he, he did have his health problems, Gerard Houllier, mm. but um, Gary McAllister had to step in, and between the two of them, they got Villa out of a relegation scrap. Yeah, just, I think he's... Uh, we speak about um, uh, Mr Mourinho and Pep being serial winners, and that's what they do. And he's in that category, you know? He's a little bit older than those guys, but he's in that category of knowing how to get the job done, knowing to get the right ingredients and get the right staff around him so they can get the, the right results that he's looking for. And, yeah, just... Just, yeah, massive loss. It really is a huge loss to football. Mm. Talking of Aston Villa, they have just tweeted about this as well. Dion, this is what they've said. All at Aston Villa are deeply saddened to learn of the passing of Gerard Houllier, our manager, during the 2010-2011 season. Our thoughts are with Gerard's loved ones at this incredibly difficult time. I think it's quite interesting as well because we talk about everything that he's done in football as well. He's also, Michael alluded to it there, he seems so much more than just a football manager. Yeah. He also had various technical roles within the game as well. He even worked with Leon's women's team as well. So he's clearly a very intelligent man with multifaceted, multi-talents. Yeah, and wanting, and wanting the football club that he's working for, the whole football club, you, you know, yeah. you just touched on it there, to work, whether it's you know, selling loads of shirts or making sure the ladies' team does as well as the men's team. He was a forward thinker, wasn't he? Yeah, like yeah. Said, as well, absolutely. The sports yeah. science side of things. Correct. Was, you know, and overseeing things, Will, you know, overseeing mm. that the club's, you know, doing well football wise. What can we do better? Yeah. Ask me questions. I'm here for you. My door's open. That kind of gentleman. Yeah. Very, very nice. Mm. Uh, right, let's go to Merseyside and speak to Simon Crabtree because Simon's with a man who knows uh, Gerard Julio very well and uh, used to work very closely with Gerard as well, Simon. Hi, yeah, I'm in Liverpool city centre actually. We've been talking to some of the staff here in the Castle Street townhouse, which is a restaurant in the middle of the city. They were all really shocked when we shared the sad news with them that Gerard Houllier had passed away this morning. Liverpool fans will remember him, I'm sure, for 2001 as much as anything that year that he won the, uh, the domestic treble as far as the Cups were concerned. He picked up the UEFA Cup then as well. He changed things at Liverpool. The club, you, we heard from Jamie Carragher putting a message that he was devastated stated the club a reminder they have mourned the passing of the treble winning manager Gerard Houllier uh, rest in peace and his roots as you mentioned before go back actually further than in becoming the manager at Liverpool Greg O'Keefe who as you say used to work at the Liverpool Echo just around the corner is the writer at the Athletic now 